Let's make sure everything is going all right. Should be able to see that. Hopefully, at least that's the idea. Okay, cool. I think I have it all good. Uh, if it's not good, please let me know. Or if you guys could be able to hear me or can't be able to hear me, hopefully you should be able to. I see the thing kind of going up and down, uh, but we'll see. Obviously, again, AV is always a pain in the butt whenever it comes to this. So. Perfect. Thank you so much. How has the uh, conference been for everybody so far? Good. Uh, what other uh, places or things or sessions have you attended that you've really enjoyed? Yeah, that makes sense. I think um, yesterday should have been the gamer doc, if I remember correctly, uh, which is really funny because she was one of my mentors uh, just in esports in general. I had uh, signed up for an esports like mentorship program, and, and she was the first person that connected with me. So she was just an amazing, wonderful. Like Lindsay is is literally just so nice, um, so supportive, super active, and everything else about her. So. Um, yeah, she knows a lot, and she's extremely bubbly, extremely kind, uh, just kind of very outgoing, uh, really is able to kind of like bring in or rope other people in, no matter like what you're kind of thinking about, but yeah. Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and technically get started, um, but overall... Uh, so basically, this is a very much, it's, it's a very lax sh session. Um, my program is, I am H.J. Taylor, uh, also known as Sink Ships. Uh, I'm from the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. Um, and I like to kind of talk about necessarily how I, uh, as the president for Illini Esports, happen to run an esports program that has not received any sort of funding or help or any sort of uh, approved ability from the university in and of itself. Um, that being said, you know, there, there are a few things that we've kind of connected with the university and we're seeing a lot more, I would say, support per se, um, but it's still nowhere to the idea of uh, funding for scholarships or travel or paying for coaches, directors, literally anything else matter. 
Um, but like I said, a lot of this is going to be very much the idea of kind of conversing and asking questions. And I want it very relaxed. I know that there's only a few people here, but that's fine. Um, we can just kind of have an open and honest conversation um, and kind of go from there. So just a little bit more about eSports or Alina eSports. So particularly we are uh, still a registered or student organization or what we like to call an RSO, uh, but we are the premier organization for all things related to eSports on campus. Um, specifically, we like to say that we have a strong affinity for competition, but we also recognize that the majority of our community is just people that want to game, no matter what it kind of comes down to based off of their skill level uh, or whether their knowledge or their background or their affinity for the game, whether they have a, you know, super strong love of the game or if they just kind of play casually with their friends. We kind of invite anybody to join us no matter what it comes down to. Um, we've competed mostly at the collegiate level uh, as high as we possibly can. Um, and typically we like to say for our overall aspect, we compete in almost over 15 different video game titles. That goes from everything from League of Legends to Overwatch to Hearthstone to uh, CSGO, Valorant. Uh, we even have now an Osu, because uh, there is a collegiate Osu that we found out that I think was really interesting and cool because I used to play that a lot. Um, but we've also pretty much anything that you could think of as a major esport, we have either accrued it on or had it as part of our program at some point. Um, for us in and of itself, we like to say that we have about 3,000 members. Um, we're going off of our Discord members typically, um, and we do have a verification process in which Discord has to let us know if they're a student, an alumni, or if they're an outsider, which is basically just somebody that's not on campus or, or has not been to the University of Illinois. Um, and we're still around 3,000 overall students that have joined that Discord. Um, for us in and of itself, we do happen to be sponsored by a few uh, kind of like local places, but some of the other major uh, corporations or organizations such as Simplify Computers is a very much local um, computers and, and I would say a place that helps with selling computer parts as well as computer services. So if you needed to fix a computer, if you needed to have a uh, certain issue with installing uh, even something as simple as like an HDMI port, for example, they could be able to help you out. Um, we're also sponsored by HyperX. They provide all of our game peripherals for our space that we do have in the hand. Uh, Kovac 2, we just actually recently acquired the sponsor. They're helping as providing aim trainers for all of our FPS uh, shooters or, or anything else that matter. Anybody that wants to basically kind of level up their skills for, for aiming or aim trainers, I think is the better way to describe it. Bisect hosting helps us out with uh, hosting our Minecraft server uh, just for our community side of things. But if we also wanted to look into like Belheim or CSGO or any other ones that have particularly work with servers, then Bisect hosting happens to provide those services for us. Uh, and then CITL is also known as the Center for Innovation of Teaching and Learning. Um, they're currently where we have our space right now, uh, but we've also worked with other partners such as Red Bull, Athletico, uh, Zero Gen Apparel. They're the ones that have provided the jerseys that you can see to the right there, as well as Evil Geniuses, Cloud9, TSM, and Team Liquid. So we have, even though not necessarily a lot of recognition from the university in and of itself. We do happen to be very much involved with the esports community at large, as well as also in a local stance. So for some of our community highlights, um, we've hosted the largest L uh, League of Legends viewing party in the Midwest that we had over almost 800 attendees. This was obviously back in, I think it was 2018, if I remember correctly, uh, before the pandemic and the like there. We've hosted uh, attendees of up to 100 plus at LANs in person, either at our union uh, or in certain spaces around campus. We've had Thursday night open gaming hours where people can be able to stop by, they can rent out a laptop or a, uh, a gaming computer, basically play a bunch of games or they can play board games, tabletop role playing games, et cetera, kind of all at a nice like Thursday open gaming hours and you can kind of meet other people throughout there. Uh, typically, you will have things called what we like to call pickup games or pugs that we'll have at a weekly for almost every single gaming community. Uh, we have a virtual campus that we built on Minecraft. I'm not necessarily sure where it is, but I know that we had provided that uh, service for admissions when they were trying to figure out how necessarily to bring on new students and show them around the campus. It was a lot of work and effort, and I don't think that it was completed just because our campus is still huge overall. Um, it spans almost over, like, I think five or six miles, and I could be wrong, and that's very much lengthwise. That's not even talking about the width. Um, but we also happen to have semester-long tournaments, trivia nights, giveaways, online viewing parties that we've had recently during the pandemic. Um, and we've also been focusing a lot on how exactly we want to start off this next year uh, with lands and, and a couple of other fun events that we're going to be announcing later on. 
for competitively, uh, we, like I said before, compete in a lot of different uh, games and variety of things. And that could be something, as I said before, uh, we're typically ranked in almost top 20 to top 30 for almost every single game. So again, some of those I just want to mention, uh, top five nationally for Call of Duty, top eight nationally for League of Legends, uh, top 15 for Rainbow Six, top four in Fortnite Duos, uh, top five in Echo Arena, that's a VR esports game. Uh, and we actually had recently placed first place in the big time network because they couldn't say big 10 network but the big time network for valorant uh, as well as third place finish in csl and so overall our students uh, had won almost thirty thousand dollars in prize money depending on the, again those top uh, those placements that they had done um, we've also kind of won a couple of i think that there was like corsair had sponsored a tournament to like from there so we hadn't counted those in as direct cash uh, but those are also products that people have won along the way um, throughout all the tournaments that they competed through. And then overall, oops, sorry about that, uh, we have gotten to social media. Um, social media is definitely the biggest thing that we always like to talk about just because, again, it kind of talks about our reach and, and where exactly that we're looking at or what we've been trying to work on as much as possible. Um, so for our aspect, at least, what I think is really interesting is that we do happen to have a 3,250-plus uh, member Discord. Uh, it is a Discord partner as well or partnered community, um, which is really a, a cool aspect because not a lot of esports discords do have to have that community partnership. Uh, we just actually recently passed 2,100 followers on Twitter, which was really cool due to a social media campaign that we did. 900 Twitch followers. Um, we're expecting that our lands are going to have at least around 500 overall expected attendees throughout all the, uh, the semester overall. Uh, we do have a website, which is esports.illinois.edu. Uh, we have about 1,000 Facebook likes, 400 Instagram followers, and typically around 200,000 impressions per month. So running these overall aspects, which is, you know, the biggest thing that we're trying to see is basically the, the connections that we're finding throughout the majority of the time is coming through social media. Um, people will find us randomly through Reddit, our website, our articles that we happen to post, uh, maybe an article that a news uh, outlet or, or, or somewhere close by a media outlet might have posted, for example. Um, we're finding a lot of kind of people will randomly come in and start wondering about esports or the like from there. And, you know, we're hoping that now as the pandemic, quote unquote, hopefully is going to be coming to an end, we can start doing more in-person events and, and more in-person attended events necessarily, which also increases giveaways or connections with campus or if we're able to provide necessarily a space or a place for people to come in and do these events. That would be also something that we're looking into. So one of the questions that I typically get is, you know, how do you how do you run such a large organization? And, and mostly that relies a lot of our admin members. Um, we do have around 70 overall admin members and we're kind of increasing every single year. Um, mind you, those positions go from anything from director of social media to a vice president of competitive to a vice president of community um, to also just being a graphic design person that might help us out with making things look nice or it could be creating uh, wonderful posters for us to put around campus. Um, we just recently started getting into broadcasting and, and, and providing content um, and that's going to be our big focus for this next year is actually creating content based around our players, our community, uh, anything that we do for big events and the like from there. Uh, we want to basically try to have recorded footage of that because that was something that was not looked at for the past couple of um, years overall. I probably should have also mentioned Alina Esports has been around for eight years. Um, but it, it, you know, it grew from about 50 people that, that would have kind of enjoyed it. And that was from various different clubs where there was like a, an Illini Smite Club, an Illini Smash Club, an Illini uh, Valorant, or well, League of Legends and, and Overwatch and all those other different games. And then they kind of just amalgamated them together, if that makes any sense. Um, that was about eight years ago, actually, we found out. Um, I had always been saying six years, so to find that out for about eight years is really interesting. But um, Having that, like a lot of the presidents necessarily didn't focus on content because they were very much trying to figure out just how to, to run the things and they were very much hoping that at some point campus would pick us up um, and, and we've kind of been turned away every single time that we have been talked to or mentioned or the like from there and it's been very frustrating. Um, but that's something that again like we're, we're hoping to change, you know, I, I think that it's only a matter of time before UIUC starts to notice us because we know that just recently, for example, the University of Michigan, I think, I, and I could be wrong in the exact number, but I think it was a $2 million crowdfunding 
slash fundraising that they had just done for the esports program. I know that the Ohio State University, for example, has also recently either acquired a space or is building a space or at least has supporting, I think it's League of Legends, Overwatch, and I think Rocket League, if I remember correctly. Um, so it's, it's we're starting, you know, the, the biggest question that we were always asked is, you know, how exactly do the other Big Ten network or anything else to the size of UIUC work with or, or kind of tackle esports? And, and that's what we're trying to figure out is, you know, say, hey, you know, we're finally starting to see that, that, that there's people coming in and starting to say these things. So, you know, UIUC either A, needs to be a leader in this or, or, or at least needs to start looking into this because places around campus are starting to notice us. That we've just been talking with the union, we've been talking with a, uh, admissions, for example, like I said before, uh, we've been talking with now they're thinking of creating like a game design and a possible esports minor, for example. Um, so I, I think that there's a lot more people that are becoming kind of putting their eyes on esports. It's just that the administration, the higher, higher ups have not necessarily looked into that. Um, so, Brad, uh, how many of your competitive players had a chance to play competitively in high school? Um, so, overall, we had 200 competitive signed players um, towards Illini Esports across all of those different games. Um, I don't think that a lot of them honestly had the chance to play competitively in high school. And if they did, it was very sporadic. Um, obviously, again, you know, like when you come to high school, like let's say League of Legends, for example, you might be a, a diamond player, but you're playing with uh, golds or, or silvers or maybe a couple platinums necessarily, just because again, the, the rank ladder is just so different that they'll play competitively. But we see that, you know, even those that played competitively at high school and then they play at a collegiate level, it is a, a vast difference. There's still a, a knowledge gap that they have to kind of come over. Um, so I would say probably only about 20 to 25% of actual people uh, probably played at some point competitively, uh, other than just you know playing on solo queue. They might have played for other teams when they were in high school, but, but not a lot necessarily played for like high school teams just by themselves. Hope that answers your question. Um, but yeah, so the, again, you know, that's kind of the, the overall thing that we're seeing with the administration is that for some reason, we're just kind of being ignored. And so still, you know, how do we have to run that? And that's through just working and, and creating our way up there, creating memes that people happen to like, creating a space that people happen to enjoy, uh, creating an experience that they can't happen to get anywhere else necessarily, and then providing that with either, uh, you know, giveaways or some sort of funding or we might have a tournament in which we have like 150 dollar uh, tournament prize winnings or we might make trophies honestly um a lot of people you know they happen to also ask and say hey you know how do you happen to work with uh bigger groups or, or how do you work in, in creating this funding and a lot of it comes from you know merchandise that we have these like nice t-shirts for example um one of the easiest ones that we had done was we were selling these like keycaps um they're nice like little clicking keycaps um, you can get them designed based off of where we had had it you could have like blue or orange or white or black um, you could get an aluminum base or you can get a plastic base um, and, and people can use these they they said that they use these as kind of like the, the fidget toys before we had made them in the pandemic and that was really nice and that was we made like 50 to 60 dollars off of that um, we've also you know made mouse pads before we've also worked with uh, the jersey providers to see if we could be able to sell the jerseys and we made a uh, a couple of dollars of profit off of that. It wasn't our biggest thing again, just because you know, the majority of the jerseys, you know, it kind of went to our competitive players. But we just recently held a, a merchandise sale uh, for T-shirts and hats and, and and lanyards, and overall we sold almost a hundred uh, T-shirts. And and I think that there was like twenty to forty hats, if I remember correctly, and thirty lanyards. And so we're gonna you know net somewhere around four hundred dollars. And and a lot of it just comes from people like cool design. They you know. We found that when we were selling like these kind of t-shirts, they were nice, but a lot of the, I would say, older uh, generations uh, haven't really liked the t-shirts. We, you know, we saw that the majority of people that purchased these t-shirts were like alumni, teachers, faculty, um, et cetera. You know, they, they really liked the idea of just like a very plain classic t-shirt with just Illini Esports or whatever it was on there. And then when we finally included a design uh, actually into the pros uh, prospect, then we saw more people picking it up from actual college students or, or people working around necessarily with us. Um, so I think that if you're having to think of running, you know, like a, a high school, you know, overall aspect, 
reach out and see either with the graphic design department or the art departments that you might have necessarily to see if there's a way that, you know, hey, we want to design this for a line of esports, you know, could there be a way to be able to develop something? Or even the anime clubs, most likely. I know it sounds always weird, but like when I was in high school, I worked with the anime clubs and they and they always uh, provided like really cool drawings for us. Sure, that they were animated, they had a certain style, but it was a really cool way to kind of have a collaborative experience and it provided them something to put on a portfolio, a resume, a CV, et cetera. Um, and also it was a way to sell really cool or well-designed and necessarily uh, graphics. And then the biggest thing is also finding like a partner to work with uh, that, you know, they won't overcharge you or undersell you at the same time too. Um, just because that's also, again, a very big thing that you can do. Um, I realized I don't have a lot, uh, they, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I was preparing the idea of just asking a lot of questions and kind of figuring things out. Um, so I'll kind of open it up if there's any sort of major questions, um, comments or concerns. Otherwise, I'm just going to continue to kind of provide about some of the other experiences of things that we've done as we've run a big uh, university uh, esports program. Uh, one of the things that we're hoping to do is getting more connected with high schools because that's something that, again, was kind of lacking previously um, before the pandemic was kind of going into its full thing. We were hoping to have a high school summit at some point at the University of Illinois. Um, obviously then the pandemic hit and, and we were kind of put on a back burner from there. There's not much that we could have been able to do that. That's still something that we're planning on doing, but it's looking like it's most likely gonna be next summer is the overall idea. Um, so if you're involved or with a high school, or if that's something that you think that would be really interesting, we're still trying to figure out the logistics. Uh, but I think that it would be a really cool opportunity to bring students down, uh, provide either like a hotel or, or, or someplace to stay necessarily, uh, and show them kind of around the University of Illinois, but also maybe have like a small tournament or, or something else. We're not necessarily sure on what's the best way to handle it. You know, we know that UIUC is, is for the most part, two and a half to, to three hours out of the way for, for the majority of places, unfortunately. Um, we're not, you know, obviously in the middle of Chicago or anything, but at the same time, it'd be really cool if there's a the way that we could be able to kind of uh, work with people as much as we possibly can. Yeah, so for hardwares and systems, um, in the beginning, uh, the majority of it came from students. They would just work uh, either off of their like school laptops or they might have done something from, uh, you know, having a computer. Um, I can attest that when I was coaching the League of Legends, for example, uh, we had multiple players that they lived in the same dorm, for example, uh, and when a fire alarm went off, we had to cancel scrims because, uh, you know, we would have them leave for, for 15 plus minutes because some college freshman decided to make bacon in their, in their, um, of their dorms or their their apartment rooms or whatever it was and that was really frustrating to handle um we even have a i had a picture of a of one of our players our top laner for example in league of legends again uh he had his computer on his side and his battery pack was outside of the actual uh computer itself because it was just I don't know if it was so dirty or dusty or it was just it wouldn't work if it was on a certain level or something like that um but that was definitely kind of the, the 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 really hard part, and I mean, even today, like we still we don't have a, a dedicated space. We've only been working with uh, the Center for Innovation, Teaching, and Learning to be able to borrow that space. And, and I think I have a I think I have a picture of it um, that you can kind of see briefly. So it's it's uh, it's it's this space uh, here, kind of behind you. Can kind of see the setups necessarily um, over to the left there, but. They, they have that space necessarily set up for, for um, VR equipment that they, they work with a graphic design um, class and, and, and they also have like uh, 3D printing, laser cutting, etc. That's all kind of seen in the background there uh, and it's, it's really hard. But um, the idea is that this space is, again, it's meant for the, that kind of thing. It's not meant for us to, to be able to use. So we kind of just rent it out. Um, but that's the, the biggest thing that I can say for that is that, it, you know, it's, it's really difficult even now because yes, HyperX provides, you know, the keyboards and the mice and the mice and the mouse pads and everything else better, but it's only for those six things. And, and if um, the facilities person says that, you know, we have to close up at, at nine o'clock, like we have to leave that space. Um, if the, if one of the full-time staff members is not there to, to be able to watch over us, you know, we, we aren't able to be in that space, unfortunately, uh, because it's still a university room or a, university, or like a campus room necessarily. So a lot of the times players will still play from home um, or play from apartments or dorms or wherever else that they are. Um, and, and that's caused us a lot of problems, unfortunately. 
And so we're hoping that as we, you know, we, we're getting into this next year, I don't know why the, I did not touch anything, um, but uh, as we get into the next year, the the hope in the event necessarily uh, is that there's a new space that's kind of opened up on campus called the Idea Lab, um, and we're working with them to, to be able to use that space, at least again, temporarily, but it's much more accessible. Um, they're open later. There's not something that needs to be watching over us because it's part of the library. And so because it's part of the library, yes, they have an hour, so I think they shut down at like 2 a.m. Um, but as long as like we're out and about by then, like it's it's not that big of a deal. Um, and they have much nicer computers and a much nicer space. But again, the downside is, you know, there's only, I think it's like seven or eight computers in there. And so if we wanted to have like two teams in there, it's impossible. I mean, there, there's no way. And especially they, they don't have, a, it's almost like a cubicle. And, and so you can easily hear other people in that area and, and if you wanted to have two you couldn't have two teams in that space i mean again it's it's a step up necessarily from this just because again of the the, the leniency of the, the able to you know when do we want to go or what we want to be able to do but at the long running kind of standpoint we're we still don't have you know something that we can call our own something that we can brand our own or something that we can be able to kind of work with because the university has a i would say also a problem with spacing right now they don't know where you know they're, it's 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 not growing enough to be able to work with um there's not enough space and there's too many things going on and so like you'll see classrooms um like a statistics classroom can be held in a food science place just because the food science hall has a, an auditorium that's not being used but the statistics auditoriums are all being used right now and so it asks the question of like what's going on with spaces but yeah that's that's kind of the overall aspect. I, and again, even with our sponsors, you know, here, like we only have sponsors for or the HyperX while, while we're super grateful and, and, and love working with them. We only have like a six overall, I, or no, we have, we have, sorry, we have seven keyboards, seven mice, had seven headsets. Um, and so we're only, you know, we're not able to provide those for every single one of our players. Uh, long term, do you hope to connect with the university or where, do you prefer to stay where you are? I. That's something that we've been going for and, and back with for like a long time. Um, what I'm very afraid of is, you know, this this unfortunately can seem almost like a second job for me. I'm a PhD candidate in, in, in food science um, and, and I'm already kind of at a, a limit of how much time that I can be able to dedicate to this program. And, and I'm still overseeing this and putting as much time and effort that I can possible into it. And we're still seeing that, you know, this this could be like almost a second job or, or, or this could be crafted out to be a job. And so I'm afraid that the university, they're going to say, oh, yeah, we finally want to get into esports. Oh, here's look at esports. We're just going to take it and we're just going to make it our own instead of working either A, with the students or B, you know, trying to converse with us and talk with us. Because this past year, for example, we saw a lot of. Um, random departments uh, like like the union or, or uh, intramurals or athletics was getting involved in esports but they would like they would never contact us they would never talk with us and we and we didn't know why other than they just didn't know who we were and what we were doing and so we reached out to them and said hey we're here we're here to help you you don't have to sign a contract for for somebody to be able to broadcast your your tournaments that you're running your intramural tournaments or your your small you know like party lands that you're trying to run um during this pandemic like online like we can be able to do that for you and we'll do it for free because we have people that want to get this experience to go into esports um and and that's what i'm just i'm i'm deathly afraid of is that people will come in and, and snatch it up and so i i would love to connect with the university but i'd want to have this hybrid kind of aspect where the students are still involved they're still able to make decisions they're still able to run uh, events and, and, and kind of figure things out, but the university helps us out with providing a space, uh, providing funding, or at least connecting us with with either fundraising, donations, uh, alumni, et cetera, something, uh, resources in general that we desperately need uh, to be able to kind of, you know, thrive and, and, and be sustainable. Or again, you know, a big thing would be helping with recruiting because we're going to get to a point where, for example, in, in Overwatch or League of Legends, the best teams are going to continue to be the best teams because they are able to recruit on scholarship all of these wonderful players to come by. And I get emailed at least 20 times, you know, a month, every single month that is like, you know, do you guys have scholarships? Do you guys have a way to be able to pay? Because unfortunately, U of I is, is definitely a... Um, a program that costs quite a bit of money, unfortunately. And and it's one of those things of I have to turn them down, I have to say no, I have to say that there's no way that we can be able to provide it. And so I think that when the university brings us aboard, 
that's something that we can have the conversation of how, you know, okay, I, I have this money. How do I make it into scholarships? Um, how do we, you know, figure this out and how do we provide these to those students or, or work with them at a bigger level? It could also just be the idea of like helping us out with branding, helping us out with understanding, promoting us rather than just like retweeting us every now and then. And, and we're still representing the university. We're still competing at these places. We're still getting top 15, top, you know, 10, top, top five, and hopefully sometimes national championships and, and, and representing the U of I at, as just a different way than, than football or soccer or basketball or whatever else matter. And even if we're seen as just intramurals, then that's fine. That still helps us to connect to the resources and legitimizes us as the esports authority on campus. Because um, again, I just, I don't want other places to come in and, and start taking things away from us or, or, or hosting their own esports tournaments without working with us because that's happened way too many times um, in, in just this past year alone. So it's, it's very much a, a fear that I have is that all of this work that I'm going to do is just going to be going to be for, for not, unfortunately, but um, yeah, I, I, I hate to, <laughs> but I think that it's, it's kind of the unfortunate problem that I think a lot of campuses or a lot of like RSOs or organizations or gaming clubs or whatever you want to call it has um, because there has been a lot of problems that, that we've seen with that. Um, and so I'm, I'm just hopeful that the university will, will listen to us and, and take our advice and, and understand that, you know, we're coming at it from, we know what we're talking about. I, I've run this program for two years. I'm going to continue to run this program. I'm going to continue doing the best that I can with it. Um, so that's pretty much all I've got. Uh, that's, uh, <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> I've got allergies today, so my throat's been kind of acting up a little bit, but um, are there any other questions, comments, or concerns, anything else that you guys would like to know about or any way that I could be able to connect you guys or, or work with you? Um, I should probably, if you, uh, if you do have any other questions, comments, or concerns, um, please feel free to reach out to us uh, at any point. You can join our Discord. That's in the bottom right there. So it's just discord.gg slash Illini Esports. Uh, you can email us at esports at illinois.edu. Um, or you could be able to go onto our websites at esports.illinois.edu. Um, and I also have my own personal Discord, and I'll put that in the chat real quick. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much all I've got. Um, so thank you guys so much for uh, stopping by. Uh, I really appreciate it a lot. I hope that you were able to learn a little bit more about our program. Hopefully, again, that we could be able to connect up and, and work together to provide something. And hopefully, we can be able to kind of legitimize, you know, Illini esports or just collegiate esports in general, as well as high school esports, because I think that it's only going to continue to grow more and more as people become more involved with esports at you know a lower level and hopefully become either pros or become collegiate athletes or whatever that they decide to do with their lives um that's all i got <laughs> thank you again uh i'll kind of wait around and, and and we still got technically 15 more minutes you know i that's that's perfectly fine so if you have any questions i wish that there was a way to kind of like have people speak up if they wanted to. It's, it's always weird just kind of talking to myself or talking to the camera uh, and just waiting for people to type, but you know, it is what it is. <laughs> oh, geez. Stop that. Great. <clears throat> I am not seeing anything else. Um, thank you all so much and, and have a great day.